Socialists believe that one person should be in control of the prices, that government should be setting a standard and then they decide what you pay. Markets and competition don't factor into it. And that's why everything stagnates. Every single time socialism has ever been tried, that's what always happens. Treating things like commodities as opposed to treating them like they are rights or public goods always results in better products for less money. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid is brought to you by the one and only Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Been a little while since she's been on a Daily Dose of Stupid. We can never stay away from her for too long because, as you've come to expect, she is a overrunning fountain full of stupid. And so this is no different. So apparently AOC is actually getting into the fashion business. She's actually had a shop on her, I guess, website or campaign site for some time now. The truth is, Joe Manchin actually recently mentioned, because they got into a tiff with one another, uh, he kind of jokingly but accurately said, I don't really understand what she does all day except, like, make Instagram posts or whatever. <laughs> and uh, she actually, I, that's actually true. She's much more of a internet celebrity than she is an actual congressperson doing legislation. I mean, I don't just say this because I don't like her or because she's a Democrat. There are lots of Democrats that spend much of their time doing legislation, and I wish that they would spend more time on Instagram like AOC uh, as opposed to actually making policy at the time. I really wish that Nancy Pelosi or Dianne Feinstein or any of those people spent a lot more time doing Internet garbage instead of trying to ruin everyone's life. That would actually be an improvement, in my opinion, and that's one of the reasons, just one of the many reasons that AOC is by far my favorite congressperson, because she makes my job easy. And she has done it yet again, people. She is actually, I just love the, the utter lack of self-awareness coming from AOC. Uh, this is from her website. She is putting out a shirt. You can go to the AOC website and buy this. Tax the rich. It's a single colored sweatshirt. It only has one color in the design. Yet somehow it is $58. That's right. You can look at the price tag right there. 58 big ones for the AMC Tech Lurid shirt. Uh, which, I mean, here's the thing. There are a lot of people on the right that I've seen cover this that are calling this hypocrisy because it is kind of funny charging people 58 bucks for a sweatshirt that says tax the rich because only a rich person could buy it. But I say this is not hypocrisy. This shirt itself is a tax on the rich, a stupid tax, but it is a tax going to a congressperson, so a member of the government, and only a rich person could pay 58 bucks for a sweatshirt. Ergo, the shirt itself is a tax on the rich. So it's not hypocrisy. It's actually very much in line with the stated values of AOC. Uh, I, I, I say that is the case. But honestly, this is a preview of socialism. That's what this is. Like I said, you're sending money to a member of the government and not getting much in return. You're getting a crappy sweatshirt that you could probably go down to the, your local, I guess in New York it would be Bodega, where AOC's from, but here, your local gas station, and buy a sweatshirt, uh, a sweatshirt of, I'm sure, similar quality for maybe 20 bucks. I, I mean, I don't really have a lot of sweatshirts. I don't really buy sweatshirts. I like short sleeve shirts, but, you know, I'm sure that it's not going to be $58. Uh, there is no question about that, but also notice, and I, I want to bring this up one more time to point this out, I thought this was pretty hilarious as well. If you'll notice that underneath the tax of the rich mantra, uh, which is both brave and beautiful, uh, <laughs> you'll see that she has the AOC logo, which I found very interesting because it's just the letters AOC. It's not actually her name. See, I thought, because we remember we had this conversation about a month ago, that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez she had actually asserted that saying AOC is sexist or something. 
and that when Donald Trump refers to her as AOC, that that is degrading to women. I, I don't really, I guess now AOC is degrading women by calling herself AOC and having her actual brand in it. And by the way, AOC is also her Twitter handle, yet somehow this is racist. I, I don't know, maybe it's like the confusing and nonsensical rules that people sometimes attribute to the N-word that only certain people can say it, but certain people can't say it. Uh, and used to, people would make that ridiculous and illogical excuse for, well, just black people can say it. But then they were like, but we also want white liberals to be able to say it. So basically just the only people that can't say it are people that we disagree with politically. And that seems to be AOC's stance as well, since she's literally putting the AOC moniker on the t-shirts that she herself is selling. I do just love the utter lack of self-awareness from socialists, because you've got guys like Bernie that are millionaires and have three houses that are insanely elaborate that no regular person from just off the street could possibly afford. You've got a similar thing with people like Elizabeth Warren. You've got Nancy Pelosi with just giant tubs full of ice cream that she can go to. And, and not just like Briars or, you know, your run-of-the-mill ice cream. This is like $13, $14 a pint ice cream. And she's got two or three hundred dollars of it clearly visible in a freezer when everybody else is just, you know, screw you little people. You can fend for yourselves, and I know that we have all these policies that we're supporting that say you can't work, but it's fine because I have a cooler full of designer ice cream. Uh, Obama's the same way. They bought, what was it, like a $27 million house in Martha's Vineyard, something ridiculous. I don't know if that was the exact price tag, but it was somewhere along those lines. Uh, and, and that's on top of the already insanely expensive house that they have in Washington, D.C., which is the most expensive place to live in the entire country, those counties surrounding Washington, D.C. are by far the most expensive real estate that you can actually live in. And, and they've got a house there and they also have a house in Martha's Vineyard. But this goes down to a very common, very, uh, it, it happens every single time that socialism is tried, to be perfectly honest. Socialism is for the people, not the socialists. That's why when you look at Venezuela, you can have people literally hunting down stray dogs and cats in the streets to kill them and eat them because that's all they have. And then you've got Hugo Chavez, or in this one particular case, Maduro, who can just be caught on camera just scarfing down empanadas. And I mean, does that guy look like he's missed a meal in a while? No, I don't think so. That's how it always works. Socialism is for the people, not the socialists. They're fine with profiting off of capitalism, and AOC is fine with driving out jobs from New York from Amazon, and not that I'm a huge fan of Amazon or Jeff Bezos anyway, but she's fine with driving those jobs out while simultaneously saying, well, capitalism is evil and exploitive, and uh, all it does is overcharge people for things, and meanwhile, she's got a $58 sweatshirt on her website. Because again... That is for the people, not the socialists, like AOC. And we've seen the same thing with Democrats ignoring their COVID restrictions over and over again. We've done stories about that. But since capitalism is so evil and so exploitive, I thought maybe what would be helpful for AOC, because I'm sure she watches the show like every night. It's her favorite show. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that she would uh, be interested to know that just did some comparison, and, and not even necessarily just comparison to any random sweatshirt that we could find. I thought it might be fun to do a comparison to people that actually believe in capitalism. So I looked at some of my favorite conservative stores and looked at some of their selections of sweatshirts and saw what we've got here. So the Blaze Media sweatshirt, they have the Santifa <laughs> claws. <laughs> Uh, which is probably my personal favorite. I do really like that one. That one's 40 bucks. You've got Libertarian Country, which is a company that I've bought quite a few of my shirts from. I've actually worn some of their shirts on the air. That one's only 35 and that's a full hoodie. It even has a hood attached to it, and it's still significantly less, almost half the price of AOC. And then the, the worst capitalist of all, the ones that are profiting off of guns, the NRA, who, by the way, doesn't sell guns, 
but they do sell sweatshirts that have the NRA logo on them. That one's about half the price of AOC's sweatshirt at twenty nine ninety five. So it's odd that these evil exploitive capitalists somehow have cheaper products than the democratic socialist that wants everything to be free. Well, ultimately, she doesn't want everything to be free. That's the issue. You see, in the real world, when their economic systems are actually applied, that's exactly what happens. The capitalists have to compete with one another and drive cost down. They make things cheaper and better and more affordable to the average person. That's what a market does. Socialists believe that one person should be in control of the prices, that government should be setting a standard and then they decide what you pay. Markets and competition don't factor into it. And that's why everything stagnates. Every single time socialism has ever been tried, that's what always happens. Treating things like commodities as opposed to treating them like they are rights or public goods always results in better products for less money. That's how it's always been. That's how it's always going to be. So that comparison I just gave you, that's a pretty good little summary of the difference in socialism and capitalism. The capitalists are charging less because they find ways to create better products for their customers. That's how it works. Just like government, capitalists drive costs down. Socialists, like AOC, do not. People ask me all the time, Caleb, how do you stay in such great shape? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. The Secret is a steady diet consisting mostly of likes and subscriptions, especially the ones where the person hits the notification bell. That's what actually gives me my superhuman strength. Likes, as it turns out, are very high in protein and iron. Sadly, doesn't do anything for your hair. <laughs>